we've just had the hottest night ever recorded in the UK and although it's only 7 a.m. the temperature's already 25 degrees Celsius that's around 77 degrees in old money but things don't stop here at proper DIY HQ just because it's a little bit warm you see I've got the grass to cut I've got a skip turning up and I desperately need to finish this side fence so join me today on what's probably going to be the hottest day ever in the UK for some jobs around the house and garden. So yes, just like every tradesman in the country, I can't just stop working just because it's a bit warm. I'm just looking at this lawn at the moment. There's some real high points and I haven't cut this for a number of days. So this really needs a cut before I do anything. And as I said, obviously I need to finish that side fence. If I don't finish it now, it's going to be one of those jobs that sits there for the next few weeks, if not months, never being finished. So even if it's warm, I've still got to get on to that. And actually, I think I can hear the skip man. Before going out to work in the garden, especially today, I go through my normal routine of suntan lotion and to get some ice water ready that I know is going to be the first flask of many today. Just before I cut the lawn, one thing I do want to check is the adjustment of the blade. I noticed last time I used it, I can't hear the blade touching the cutting bar at the bottom. So I'm a little bit worried that I'm not getting a really clean cut. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, so it's not actually cutting the paper, which means it's just probably worn down. It's just one of those adjustments you've got to make every now and again. It doesn't take too long. Put a couple of clicks in there just to see. Oh, see, now I can hear that just very lightly scraping across the cutting bar at the bottom. I'll do the same on this side. Yeah, see, that's what I'm expecting to hear. And now, yeah, I'm going to get a cut. And at this end, yeah, okay. So that's just the adjustment I want to make. Well, that's a bit squeaky. That will cut a lot cleaner than it was before. One of the advantages of a cylinder mower like this is the ability to cut the grass cleanly like a pair of scissors, which helps to avoid getting broken or brown tips to the grass blades. Since I carried out my lawn levelling using the sand compost mix and reseeded, the grass has filled out quite nicely and covered all the patches that I originally smothered with the sand. It's not perfect and I'm still battling with weeds that have been there for the last couple of years, but it's getting better and now starting to look a lot more uniform and presentable. A couple of weeks ago I tried double striping the lawn, although one of the challenges of doing this is for the second stripe you need to estimate the width of the lawnmower and leave a gap, which I found means that the stripes end up as varying thicknesses. So today I thought I'd triple stripe it, which means after cutting in a standard alternating fashion I just drop back and re-stripe every third row, matching it to the two adjacent. I'm calling this the proper DIY triple stripe method, although in reality someone probably came up with the idea well before I was born. Now I'm not in the corporate world anymore, single, double and triple stripes are the things that concern me every day rather than budgets, programs and chairing meetings. I think actually quite a good substitute. 
So that is the grass cut and it's looking all right actually. It's not perfect but it's definitely better with the sprinkler system because we haven't had rain for like weeks and weeks so if I didn't water this it would look a bit of a mess. Now talking about watering I think I need to put some water on this now and while I'm doing that go around the rest of the garden doing some watering and I need a drink of water. So it's rapidly heating up. I think it's only about nine o'clock. So I think I'd better get on and finish this fence. So this is where we go back in time just a few days ago when it was just warm rather than ridiculously hot. And I took the opportunity to install a water pipe and an electric cable behind the fence that I'm currently putting up. These will serve the paddock area in the future and at the moment I'm just taking the opportunity to clip it on and install it behind this fence which is a really convenient place for the services to get from the workshop out into the field. I start with the water pipe and put that at the bottom running along the bottom cant rail of the existing fence which seems a convenient place to fix it to. Just next to the green wall, I do have to take down a couple of the feather edge boards which I've recently put up, just so I can have some room to feed the pipe through from one area to the other. And this is where using screws on feather edge boards really comes in handy and makes them easy to remove if I ever need to. With the water pipe fixed in place, I turn my attention to the armoured electric cable and spend a few minutes rigging up a stand so that the cable can be unwound. From experience, this makes it a lot easier to pull out rather than just laying it on the floor. This way, you avoid putting twists in it, which can be a bit of a nightmare for a cable of this thickness. As the installation of this cable from my consumer unit to somewhere in the paddock is notifiable under part P of the electrical regs, I can't complete the wiring myself. However, what I can do is to get the cable in place so at some time in the future when my electrician friend comes to complete the job, the cable is already there and then he can just test it and complete the connection. To get the cable to run behind the green wall, I use the classic stick and gaffer tape technique to pull it through.
So now comes the classic question. Do you put your nails or your screws with your cable clips at the top or at the bottom? And this is the sort of question that keeps electricians in conversation forever. Now, I prefer, to be honest with you, to have them at the bottom because if anything happens to the clip, you've still got the support of the nail or the screw at the bottom. Having said that, in this instance, to get the cable to run straight, because it's sort of sitting in that notch between the cant rail and the post, I'm going to have to put mine at the top and let it hang. And in some ways, letting the cable hang, actually, in some ways, is quite tidy and a lot cleaner as well. But the answer is, it's up to you. The, officially, you can use them both ways. It's really whatever you want. With the pipe and cable installed, I can now carry on with the feather edged insulation and the rest of the fence structure. On some of the old posts that are secure but lean in, I fitted a new post in front of them with a spacer so they can add support but now in the correct alignment. With the posts in place, the cant rails and the gravel board can be fixed. The ground here is eventually going to be made up, so the gap at the bottom will eventually disappear. So back to the present day, where the mercury is still rising, I am onto my third flask of ice water and the very last 8 foot panel, which is proving to be slow going in this heat. So that's the framing complete. It's just coming up to midday, so the sun is full on. It's 34, 35 degrees. But something I've only just realised is that these boards I'm making the fence out of are reclaimed from my rear fence a few weeks ago, which is exactly the same length. However, a number of them are split or damaged to the point where I just can't use them. So now I'm short of boards. So there I was thinking I might go in for a siesta or a couple of hours in the shade. But no, no, no. Now, it's a trip to the woodyard. So it appeared that I was the only person down at the woodyard, and maybe the only one in the area doing some fencing. <laughs> Before I cover the last panel with feather edge, I fit a diagonal brace to be able to fix the armour cable and bring it down from the middle cant rail to the ground where the rest of its route will actually be underground. So that about completes this fence. I heard on the news that it hit over 40 degrees at Heathrow today and there was a chance it was even going to get hotter somewhere else as well. I've just looked at the thermometer in my garden and it says 39. Now that's not going to be as accurate as the one at Heathrow, but still pretty hot for six o'clock in the evening. All I've got left to do is to take an angle off the top here. I want this last couple of metres to angle down to match the roof behind. And that means I need to use the circular saw, but everyone's coming home from work now after a hard day in their air-conditioned office, so I don't really want to disturb them at all. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, blah de blah de blah blah de blah blah de blah I'm really hot, and it's really time for a beer. So, I'll see you next time. Yeah.